Hey, this video is brought to you today by my friends at Element. Element is a tasty electrolyte mix with everything you need and nothing you don't. That means lots of salt and no sugar. Element was formulated to help anyone with their electrolyte needs and is perfectly suited to folks following keto, low carb, or paleo diets. Element contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium per packet. The perfect ratio I have found for me. What I love the most is that there's no junk, no sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, no gluten, no fillers, no BS. As a member of our community, Element has a very special offer for you. You can claim your free Element sample pack simply by going over to the website, drinkelement.com forward slash Marcus Philly to get yours. And if you're wondering what my favorite flavor is, raspberry salt mixed with some ice water is delicious. I hope you enjoy. Ever felt like you're not doing your dumbbell rows correctly? Like maybe you're using too much rotation or momentum. Maybe your biceps are working too hard and not your back enough. Or you just wanna make sure that you're getting the most of this potent back developer. Well, let's get right into my favorite cues and tips. Cue number one, elbow to the sky. When we pull too heavily with the bicep, this looks like pulling the dumbbell directly towards the shoulders with a more pronounced angle at the elbow. Unfortunately, this neglects most of the back muscles that we wanna train. When I was young, I really wanted to have a well-developed chest and abs because those were the muscles that I could easily see in the mirror. Thankfully, I had a gym mentor early on tell me the importance of building up a strong back. See, a well-muscled back is gonna shape a great physique and also provide the necessary strength to balance out all the pressing that I wanted to do in order to build a more muscular chest. So when I was young, I dedicated just as much energy to my pulling days as I did my pushing days. Soon, I was measuring my progress in the gym by how much I could pull, not just by how much I could bench. Pulling effectively means getting the dumbbell more towards the side of the body. Rather than thinking about lifting the dumbbell, I like to teach people to think about lifting their elbow up to the sky as high as they can. The dumbbell is gonna follow and it'll be in the right place. Cue number two, torso down to the ground. When we start to see the upper body completely rotate in order to get the dumbbell moving, we're missing out on that extra range of motion that's gonna help recruit all the back muscles we want. Basically, if you just start to feel where your ribs start on your side, and then you draw a line across your back, then all the muscles above that line are getting trained, at least the ones you can see on the surface of your body. You're gonna be training your latissimus dorsi, posterior deltoids, teres major, trapezius, rhomboids, and your biceps indirectly. Now, a little scapular retraction is ideal, but when this turns into an upper body rotating to initiate movement, we're definitely missing the target muscles. So the cue here is to keep your torso pointed towards the ground mostly. Now, there is such a thing as a torso row, and this has an intentional rotation to it, but that rotation happens on the heels of a sound traditional row. Okay, cue number three. Squeeze it, don't jerk it. Let's talk momentum. Once you decide on your torso angle for the row, it's important to keep that very consistent. If you start at a 30 degree angle with your torso, and then you jerk your torso up to 60 degrees when you go to row the dumbbell, then you're simply using torso momentum to get the bell moving instead of your back muscle contractions. Squeeze the dumbbell up. That's the cue. Don't jerk the dumbbell up. If you need to, start with a slower contraction from the bottom and think about squeezing the muscles rather than jerking the muscles to get things moving. If you're making this common mistake, in most cases, you'll need to lower the weight. And this is a good thing to help recruit the right muscles. Okay, let's talk technique now. But first, if you're finding this video valuable, please hit the like and subscribe button and go ahead and share this video with a friend of yours that you know needs to see it. See, I'm on a mission to build as many beautiful and functional backs as possible with this video. So we're gonna dive in even deeper on this topic right now with the foundations of my favorite variations and how to work rows into your conditioning pieces. Now, regardless of your technique, it's pretty difficult to perform a row regardless of where your elbow is pointed, regardless of where the dumbbell is in relationship to your hip. It's hard to perform these rows without actually hitting all of the muscle groups that I've mentioned. 
but some positions will be more ideal for certain muscle groups. Furthermore, there is likely an ideal position that will be the strongest for you and allow you to pull the most load with correct form, which in turn is going to activate the most muscle tissue. And this is really why we have technique discussions in the first place. I mean, there's no such thing as perfect form. Life demands all kinds of shapes and movements from us. Gym exercises are all made up movements anyway, but they do reflect some aspects of real life. We can only hope to find technique that gives us the best chance of having a safe and effective outcome in the gym and for getting us closer to our goals. With the dumbbell row, we have three main points to consider. First, the angle of your torso. Second, the angle of your elbow. And third, where you pull the dumbbell relative to your hip and to your shoulder. Let's start with torso angle. You can perform a traditional single arm dumbbell row at a variety of angles. You can have your torso horizontal to the floor or angled up as much as 60 degrees. The angle of your body will have a subtle impact on what muscles get targeted the most. You can feel this out for yourself, but I generally find about 30 degrees gets a great stimulus. Next, let's talk elbow angle. What I'm referring to with elbow angle is how far your upper arm is from your torso. Is it at a 10 degree angle, a 45 degree angle out to the side, or 90 degrees? There's a wide range of angles that you can perform a dumbbell row at. Pulling at 90 degrees is gonna maximize the amount of posterior deltoid that's getting used. While pulling closer to 10 to 15 degrees will generally engage more of the latissimus dorsi. Go try some of these different angles here to feel the difference for yourself. Finally, shoulder to hip positioning. The other key technique foundation is where you pull the dumbbell in relationship to your hip and your shoulder. If you pull the dumbbell directly toward your shoulder, you are going to engage the bicep and upper trap more. Meanwhile, if you pull the dumbbell down closer to your hip, you're gonna be working those lats even more. And for maximal muscle recruitment, here are the points for an optimal row. I choose 30 degrees of an incline to my torso. I use a weight that allows me to pull the dumbbell or kettlebell handle all the way up to the level of my armpit or rib height. The hand that you're pulling the dumbbell with should end up about halfway between your hip and your armpit. The elbow is gonna be pointed out about 15 to 20 degrees from your side, and the movement is going to be initiated with a strong scapular retraction. Now a scapular retraction will give the illusion that your shoulder is rotating back and that you are rotating your torso but this is in fact just the traps and the rhomboids pulling the shoulder blade back towards the middle. What is the best row variation for you? Well, it's the one that allows you to perform the technique foundations that I just mentioned perfectly. There are a wide variety of ways to perform the row. They mostly vary in how much and how little stability the different positions provide. Stability is a confusing topic and can tend to throw people into one of two camps. Some say that more stability is better since it allows for greater force and higher weights lifted. Some will say less stability is better since you have to build that stability internally and therefore build up your balance. The way I see it is that stability is simply a tool and we can use it in training. It isn't good or bad. And you should likely include a little bit of a blend of both. Well, more stable exercise positions will provide increased control and you can focus more on lifting the weight and less on having to balance. Stable surfaces can be valuable for beginners that are trying to learn how to perform simple contractions. If you're having to deal with too much instability, it can get distracting. Take the example of the dumbbell RDL versus the single leg RDL. Now some of the drawbacks, well, with more stability, there will be less demand on the joints in the brain to learn to develop stability intrinsically. This means that your brain might not learn how to coordinate smaller muscles, which could mean poor balance when you're put in situations that are unstable. Here are some examples of row training with stability versus instability. Something that's more stable would be a prone dumbbell row. Less stable would be a dual dumbbell bent over row. The latter is gonna require that you can hold your body in a bent over position without moving too much. Another example would be a stable row with your knee on the bench. A less stable variation would be the tripod row and would challenge you more to create your own stability. 
Another type of row that we do is called a body row. So one final way we can adapt stability is with the surface that you're pulling on. A fixed bar body row is going to have a lot more stability than a single arm ring row. Remember, stability isn't good or bad, it's just another variable. If you're having a hard time getting the movement down correctly, then don't add instability, or it will just make it much more complicated. When's the right time to add instability? Well, when you want to incorporate more parts of your body into an exercise, or you want to add in more complexity. Don't move here unless you've mastered the technique and the foundations in the more stable exercise selection. Now I'm going to answer some of the common questions I get. Add yours to the comments below if you have extra. Marcus, how do you know if you're going too heavy? You're making some of the most common movement faults from above. You're doing torso rotation, you're jerking the torso up, and you're not hitting optimal range of motion, stopping short of when the dumbbell and the hand are right by the rib cage. These are the signs that you need more stability or you need to lower your load. Another sign is that you're missing your rep ranges. Now, rep ranges exist to guide you towards optimal weight selection. If it says eight to 10 reps and you're only getting six before your form fails, then you're going too heavy. We also use tempo prescriptions in our weight training programs. Now, if you start to miss your tempo or your form is collapsing, again, before you hit the intended rep range, you'll need to lower your weight. Marcus, how do I build better mind-muscle connections? Well, the most simple ways to do this are by slowing down your movement and lightening your loads. But another one that I love to use is bands. Bands are a tool I use to help clients learn how to build better mind-muscle connections in their movement. The RNT dumbbell row is a great example of this. You can place a thin band around your wrist in this fashion that you see here. As you start to row, this is going to encourage you to pull back against the band, which gets the lats to engage more. This is often the muscle that athletes find hardest to engage and isolate in their rowing. Marcus, what are the best row exercises for conditioning work? When I'm writing functional pump conditioning workouts, I like to think about movements that are easy to get in and out of so we can keep our aerobic effort high. To get into something like the knee on a bench dumbbell row variation would just add a step that I'd rather avoid in a conditioning workout. So my go-to pulling exercise for conditioning is called the gorilla row. To set this one up, you just put two kettlebells between your legs and the mechanics are the same as the other row variations that I've shown. A conditioning example from Persist might look like this. You would start with a bike for a thousand meters, then you would get off the bike and you would perform a couplet back and forth of kettlebell gorilla rows and tuck-ups. Complete 10 reps of gorilla rows, 10 reps of tuck-ups, nine reps of gorilla rows, nine reps of tuck-ups. Complete all of those 10 sets and then finish with one more thousand meter bike. Okay, Marcus, what are your three favorite rowing variations? Here we go. First off, the tripod dumbbell elbowing row. This drill is not gonna have a lot of weight to it. So I can get away with a little less stability and therefore I use the tripod position. I love it for its direct work that it gives to the posterior deltoid. My second favorite is the RNT knee on the bench dumbbell row. I enjoy adding bands to movements and that's just gonna give me a little extra encouragement to use certain muscle groups. Mind-muscle connections really matter when it comes to doing bodybuilding style training. And this gets me to pull more aggressively with my lats. My last one is the incline bench prone dual dumbbell row. For an incredibly stable variation of the dumbbell row, I love using the prone row. For me, this angle feels the best. I find that it really gets me targeting the full range of muscles on my back. The dual dumbbell row is a little bit unique to the single arm variations that I've covered. You're not gonna get quite as much scapular retraction, but the ability to lift more total load is going to lead to a potent stimulus that's gonna help drive full body adaptations. All right, I hope you're now loaded up with some back day inspiration. Go give these tips a try, and be sure to sign up for my email list in the description link below. We send out weekly newsletters full of training ideas to help you look good and move well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.